What's up, New Life family? What's happening? How y'all doing this evening? How are y'all doing? Man, back for another edition of Tuesday Night Refresh Bible Study. And y'all know we always excited on Tuesday Night Refresh Bible Study, y'all. We open that word up. We go deeper. And uh, I'm just grateful for y'all tuning in tonight. Amen. As you're coming on, press the share button. Y'all know how we do. I don't need to say this every time, right? We know to press the share button. If you are on YouTube, share the link with somebody. Facebook, uh, press the share button. It's about to go up tonight, y'all. It is about to go up tonight, and I'm excited about it. Amen? Y'all know we kicked off a brand new series on two, on Sunday. I said Tuesday. We kicked off a brand new series on a couple weeks ago um, about no excuses, right? And then this past Sunday, we preached a message about uh, no more passive parenting. And so real quick, just tell me real quick in the chat, just as an adult, right? Even if you're not a parent, but maybe you were listening, you got nieces and nephews, godparents, friends who you know, right? Kids in your neighborhood. Let me just ask you real quick, like what was your biggest takeaway from the No More Passive Parenting Sermon on Sunday? We dropped so many gems because we really want to help you to be you know, the best parent you can possibly be. And even for those who aren't parents, but you are, you have, you know, some kind of major influence over some kid, right? Whether it's on your block, whether it's a cousin, a niece, a nephew, a godchild of yours, whatever the case may be, a teacher, right? A mentor, a coach, you have some kind of influence on a child. And so I believe you could have learned something as well too. So tell me real quick in the chat, what was your biggest takeaway from the no more passive parenting series <laughs> right sermon rather this past sunday what was it what was it? i want to see i want i really want to see because we're about to drop some more gems tonight as we deal with part number two of the no more passive parenting sermon amen hallelujah yeah 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 come on keep them coming keep them coming i need to see it in the chat i need to see it in the chat what's up i see y'all coming on what's happening What's up? What's up? What's up? I see y'all coming on. Praise the Lord. Man, Sunday was off the hook. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the worship Sunday. I enjoyed preaching the word. I was blessed by it. Amen. I enjoyed the atmosphere, the people. Thank you to everybody who'll be serving on Sundays as well, even people who are serving behind the scenes. Like, we couldn't do what we do without you. <laughs> so thank you so much for being part of our dream team and, and serving and blessing God's people with your gifts and your talents, all that good stuff. All right. Come on. What was your greatest takeaway from the message on Sunday? I want to see. Okay. All right. Let's go for it, y'all. I want to pray for us. Thank y'all for sharing. I want to pray for us. And then I really want to hop into this word. I'm excited about it. Press the share button if you're just now coming on. Amen. You on YouTube, copy the link, send it to somebody, right? Repost it on Facebook, whatever. All right, let's pray. Uh, God, we are grateful, Father, for who you are, Lord. You are good. You are great. You are mighty. You are sovereign and you are in control, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, God, for this time of learning, God, diving deep into your word so that we can become the mature disciples that you can depend on. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive everything that you need us to learn, everything, God, that we need to be our best selves in Christ Jesus, everything that we need, God, so that we can just simply eliminate all the excuses in our lives. We want to be the best version of ourselves in Christ Jesus. So be with us and help us is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen, 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 amen. All right, let's hop into this, y'all. Let's hop into this tonight. I want to hop into part two, family, of our No More Passive Parenting message that we started on Sunday. All right? And tonight, I really want to begin with a story. So indulge me for a moment, y'all. There's a story of an eagle uh, that was flying over a river during the wintertime. And it noticed a large chunk of ice that was floating downstream, y'all. And so the eagle decided to land on the ice. Wanted to just relax for a minute. 
for a minute, right? And even though the eagle saw that there was this huge waterfall ahead, he still thought that he had plenty of time to fly away before the ice chunk went over into the waterfall. But what the eagle didn't realize is that his feet were being frozen to the ice. And as the ice chunk was going over the waterfall, the eagle discovered that he was completely stuck, unable to free his feet from the frozen ice chunk. And just think, family, this all started because the eagle thought he had more time than he really did. <laughs> In other words, y'all, the eagle waited far too long to do something about his situation. <laughs> Come here. Because if we're honest tonight, y'all, this is such a truthful illustration of parenthood today for so many people in our lives, right? Far too many parents are stuck right in the ice chunk. They're stuck thinking that they have more time to adjust. They're stuck uh, not realizing that there's a whole lot of danger that's lying ahead, right? And so sometimes as parents, we, we notice the road eyes from our children. We, we see the disregard that they have for, uh, for authority, right? We observe the type of videos that they find entertaining on YouTube and TikTok, and we think nothing of it. We believe that just because they earn good grades and aren't being suspended from school, y'all, that everything is going to be all right. <laughs> but that couldn't be further from the truth. There's actually a cliff ahead, right? And it's not until everything comes crashing down that we ask ourselves, what happened? What happened? <laughs> and often what happened is the same thing that happens in dating relationships. We ignore the red flags. Yep, even in our parenting. It's similar to us with dating relationships. We ignore the red flags because perhaps we want something to be true so bad that we keep avoiding what we should be addressing. <laughs> I want to submit to us tonight that the gospel sounds very strange to a generation that has been told they are perfect their entire lives. Yeah, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it sounds strange to a generation that has been constantly told, you know, just follow your heart. Yep. A generation that has been constantly told, y'all, that nothing is more important than being happy in this world. That couldn't be further from the truth. And so the gospel sounds very strange to them. But the gospel can become their norm when we as parents make it a priority before it is everlasting too late. Yeah, that's what Deacon Danny Wright, Danny Wright would say at the Pearly Grove Baptist Church. Rest in peace, Deacon Danny Wright. He would always pray, Lord, turn their heart before it's everlasting too late. And so perhaps maybe the Bible, the word of God, scripture, the word of God can become our children's norm before it is everlasting too late. And so then we see in Ephesians chapter six, verse number four, the Bible does not give us permission to be passive in our parenting. Instead, we are instructed to be intentional. Look what the word says. The apostle Paul is extremely clear as he states, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Now, check this out, y'all, because from the onset, we can determine from Paul's pen that healthy parenting refuses to let their kids be in control. <laughs> Did you hear, Pastor, tonight? Yeah, I don't care how much I love my kids. They're not in control. I don't care how much I want them to be great and to love me and to like me. Heck, they ain't even got to like me as long as you love me, right? Healthy parenting refuses to let their kids be in control. Do y'all hear me tonight? Children do not get to control what they do. And guess what, y'all? They don't get to control how I respond to their behavior either. Amen. Listen to me. Their actions, no matter how upset I may become, do not get to force me to become physically, emotionally, or verbally abusive toward my children. No. Uh-uh. You don't get to control me that way. I don't like what you did, but you do not get to control me in that way. No, I'm going to let you, I'm not going to let you run over me. But since I am a representative of the kingdom, I'm going to show you 
that in the realm of Christianity, compassion and consequences can occupy the same space. Did you hear me? You're going to have some consequences. Yep. <laughs> I'm not going to let you run all over me. But instead, I'm going to show you that in our world of Christianity, compassion and consequences can occupy the same space. Yeah. I need some parent to hear me tonight. I need you to write that down, screenshot it. I need you to get it in your heart. You can have compassion and give your kids consequences. They can both occupy the same space. They're not at odds with one another. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, I love you, but you just lost your privileges for an entire week. Yep. Compassion and consequences. I, 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 I model kindness and gentleness. But give me that game and give me that new Galaxy phone that you got. Give it to me. Give it to me right now. <laughs> yep. Because loving you doesn't mean I let you do what you want to do. No. Because in our Christian world, compassion and consequences can occupy. They can inhabit the same space. Are y'all with me tonight? They can inhabit the same space. They are not at odds with one another, right? Because the writer of Hebrews actually alerts us to a truth that even as adults, we sometimes forget or maybe we just overlook, right? So here's what he said in Hebrews, y'all. Look at it. For the Lord disciplines, uh-oh, the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Are y'all with me tonight? Compassion and consequences can occupy the same space. Jesus says, I love you enough to correct you. <laughs> yeah. I love you enough to, to put you on punishment. I love you enough to hold you accountable. I love you enough to take away your phone privileges. I love you enough to say, nope, you can't hang out with your friends this, this weekend because of your behavior. Right. I love you enough to tell you that if I don't correct you right now, then you're going to live a life of just thinking you're going to get everything that you want. Amen. And so, family, here it is. I really can't shake the importance, y'all, of spiritual maturity for us as adults. Why, Pastor? Because spiritual maturity understands that even though God loves me, there are moments where God scolds me for my sins. Amen. He loved me. He died for me. I'm his child. But there are moments where even God himself he doesn't let me get away with all my sins, with all my bad behavior, right? He gives me consequences for my conduct, punishment for my poor choices at times, right? And so then for us, y'all, it's irresponsible to always blame God or even the devil for the tough times in our lives, right? <laughs> when do we ever take ownership of our bad behavior, bad choices? bad words and admit that yes sometimes <laughs> i'm the problem yeah i can't blame the devil i can't blame god but but sometimes <laughs> i'm the problem when do we ever do that can we ever admit that, that 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 i'm in this tough season because i caused it and god loves me too much in this case to let it slide right that's a healthy understanding of consequences from God, while also appreciating that in other cases, God actually extends mercy to us, meaning he withholds the consequences that I actually deserve because we did it. Yeah, we were caught red handed. We were absolutely guilty and blameworthy. But there are times there are some cases where God says, you know what, I'm going to extend mercy to you. And that means God is going to withhold the consequences that I actually did. Yeah, he's going to render me uh, not guilty because of mercy. Church, I want to tell you right now that if you have an incorrect outlook on consequences from God, your child will receive inappropriate output of consequences from you. Yeah, if you have an incorrect outlook on consequences from God, then your child will receive inappropriate output of consequences from you. Can you hear me tonight? See, God isn't too lenient, y'all, where he allows me to get away with everything, but also he isn't too punitive to where he punished me for everything. No, 
the Lord has the perfect mixture of both compassion and correction, of sympathy and sanctions. And it suits us then to model God's way of doing things because we can't expect our children to come out right if we're guilty of treating them wrong. <laughs> Amen. Come on, y'all. We cannot expect our children to come out right if we're guilty of treating them wrong. And to be clear, y'all, it's possible you're treating them wrong by letting them get away with too much. Did you hear me? It's possible that we're treating our kids wrong by letting them get away with too much. Somebody type in the chat, do it God's way. Do it God's way. And so again, Ephesians 4, 6 and 4, here it is. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. All right? Are y'all with me tonight? And I know that some of you are thinking right now. Uh, so, 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 so let me, let me, can I ask the, the quiet question out loud tonight? Let me ask the quiet question out loud tonight, because I believe that's what some of you are thinking is this pastor. How do we provoke our kids to anger? Right. It, the Bible is talking about fathers. Don't provoke your kids to anger and all this other stuff about how you treat them. Pastor, tell me in a very practical way. How do we provoke our kids to anger? Right. I got a few reasons for you, y'all, how we do it. And again, I, I pray you're taking notes tonight. We know it's better to have a long pencil than a short memory. Right. We always want to take notes anytime we come together. We're gonna, I believe our church is going to have healthier parents. Yep. Because of this message, because of Sunday's message and this message together, we're going to have some healthy parents which in turn are going to produce healthy children, which makes our family healthier, healthier, our communities healthier, right? Our workspace is healthier, all because of what we're doing as parents. And again, remember what we said on Sunday, sometimes our greatest contribution to the kingdom of God is not something we do, but someone we raise, <laughs> right? Remember we said that? Some of us, the greatest contribution that we're going to make to the kingdom of God is not something we do, but someone we raise. And so I want to talk about real quick how we actually provoke our kids to anger. Number one, we provoke our kids to anger by showing favoritism. Y'all hear me? This absolutely kills our kids' spirit by showing favoritism, y'all. Amen. And you don't even know that you're doing it sometimes. But when you say stuff like, why can't you be more like your sister? Why can't you get good grades like your brother? Sibling comparison is a killer to your child's self-confidence. Can you hear me tonight, y'all? It's killing your kid's confidence. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. Here's number two, though. You provoke your kids by forcing your unfulfilled dreams on them. Listen, let them kids live. Yeah, let the kids live the life that God birthed them for. Not your dreams, but let them live, experience, walk in the life that God birthed them for. See, your should have, could have, would have must not become a life sentence for your children. That's good. Did you hear me? Your should have, could have, would have. It must not become a life sentence for your children. Let them live the life that God birthed them to live. Amen. Here's number three, though, y'all. You provoke your kids by helicopter parenting. Helicopter parenting. You heard the term before. I'm going to spend some time right here because I really want to unpack this because I believe more of us are guilty of helicopter parenting than we care to admit. So I want to talk about this for a minute. Helicopter parenting, meaning you are over parenting your child, just hovering all over them. Amen. They can't even breathe good because you smothering them. Right. Too involved. You, you, you too involved with too much in their lives. And the danger with this style of parenting is that your intense focus can negatively impact the child's mental health, their self-image 
um, their coping skills, and so much more. You're doing too much, mama. You are doing too much, daddy. In fact, it was Dr. Ann Dunwald, a licensed psychologist and author. She's author of a book called Even June Cleaver Would Forget the Juice Box. And Dr. Dunwald, y'all, she says that helicopter parenting, it means being involved in a child's life in a way that is over controlling, over protecting and over perfecting in a way that is in excess of responsible parenting. Y'all see that? Come here, mama. Your child is in college now. Let them email the professor themselves about their grade. You can't do it. Let them do it. Give them that kind of responsibility. What about you, pops? Stop always shadowing your first grade baby girl and let her and give her some time alone by herself. You don't have to be involved in every single moment in that child's life at home. No, let, let, let them be alone by themselves for a minute. Play with them dolls by themselves. Right. Here it is, parents. I know you want little Johnny and little Kimmy to do good on their school project. But stop with the disproportionate amount of help that you've been given. Some help is good, but some of you are offering a disproportionate amount of help and you're hurting them more than you're helping them in the long run. I'm trying to help some parent tonight. Please hear me. Please hear me. I'm trying to help some parent tonight. And so here it is. We become helicopter parents because we try to prevent our children from experiencing certain consequences. Stop me when I'm lying. Stop me when I'm lying. Come on. I know some of you was like, man, I know I don't fit into the category of helicopter parenting. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, you about to realize tonight that some of you show sure enough fit into this category of helicopter parenting. And sometimes we become heli helicopter parenting parents because we try to prevent our children from experiencing certain consequences. Here's what we often lose sight of, y'all. Is that struggle or not excelling and working hard? They can actually become excellent teachers for our children. And guess what? Oftentimes they're not life threatening. No, let them make a mistake. Let them work hard a little bit. Let them struggle with some stuff, right? It ain't life threatening. No, Johnny is not going to die because Johnny didn't make the sixth grade basketball team. He ain't going to die. Uh, uh let, let him struggle a little bit. Let him let him feel that pain a little bit, right? He ain't gonna die. But here's the second thing, y'all. Here's the second thing: our personal bouts with anxiety can bleed into our parenting. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Come on. I mean, we worry so much that it pushes us, even as parents, to take more control over our child's life. In, a ho in hopes to protect him. Worry. We worry. That's our own anxiety projecting in our parenting, right? But guess what? No matter how much we worry, our worries cannot prevent our children for, from ever becoming hurt or disappointed in their lives. You better hear me tonight, family. Hear me tonight. We can worry ourselves to death, but it's not going to stop our children from ever becoming hurt or disappointed disappointed y'all with me yeah it's, it's that anxiety uh, trying to rule our lives sometimes it is our personal bouts with anxiety that often bleeds into our parenting we worry in so much so much right here's what i here's what i like to say about worry y'all worry is to put a down payment on something going wrong in the future which you cannot control <laughs> can y'all hear me I need you to hear me real good. That's what I say about worry. And sometimes those of us who are impacted by anxiety, y'all, we worry so often. And it's absolutely this, and it's actually that that worry, this worry, it's putting a down payment on something going wrong in the future, which we can't even control. We think we're in control by putting up all these parameters, but even then we're not in control. Nope. Not even then are we in control, right? Here's the third reason. Now, here's, here it is thirdly. God, this is a good one, too. 
overcompensation. Yep. This concept of overparenting, helicopter parenting, rather, this concept of helicopter parenting or overparenting, it comes from overcompensation, right? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, sometimes as adults who felt unloved or neglected or even ignored as a child can sometimes overcompensate with their children. Can y'all hear me? We start projecting our own pain in our parenting by overparenting, right? We give excessive attention to them and monitor every single move in an attempt to remedy the parent's deficiency in their own upbringing. Are y'all hearing me tonight, y'all? We also consistently withhold consequences through overcompensation. Let me warn us tonight, family, that children that aren't taught accountability for their actions, they grow up to become adults that think nothing they do is wrong. We're hurting them, y'all. We are absolutely hurting our babies. Listen to me. If you fall into this category of helicopter parenting, I really want you to be careful, family. Be careful. Because although you might have good intentions, the effects of helicopter parenting can be challenging. Yeah. See, often psychologists, they find in children who have experienced overparenting, they often find immature, immature coping skills, right? Uh, decreased confidence and self-esteem. Increased anxiety in their kids, a sense of entitlement, underdeveloped life skills. They find all that in children who have experienced overparenting. Y'all want me to say those again? It's five of them. Let me say, say it again. What psychologists often see in kids who have been overparenting, overparented, kids who have parents who are helicopter parents. It's five of them. Psychologists say you often see uh, uh, um Undeveloped life skills, increased anxiety in the kids, a sense of entitlement, a decrease in confidence and self-esteem, and immature coping skills. Immature coping skills. Can y'all hear me? Here it is, church. I believe we often deal with two extremes, which are passive parenting and then over-parenting. Those are the two extremes that we're dealing with, right? But I want to believe that there's actually a sweet spot somewhere in the middle that I believe God will want us to function in. It is not over-parenting and it's not passive parenting. No. And so the danger in not finding that sweet spot is that we do more harm than good in our children's lives. And so the question remains, what do we do? If we're going to move away from passive parenting and avoid over parenting, <laughs> what do we do, Pastor? What do we do? You told me I'm raising a disciple, so help me out. What do we do, Pastor? What do we do? Well, let's go to the word of God. That's the first thing we're going to do. Let's go to the word of God. Bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from where? The Lord. Not society. Not the world. Not culture. It comes from the Lord. Now, let's talk about this word discipline real quick. Let's talk about it for a minute. Discipline means giving your child rules with rewards and punishments. Yep, discipline. It means giving your children rules with rewards and with punishment, with repercussions. It means you as a parent must crystallize the expectations that there's a constant environment where kids are helped to succeed and not set up to fail. Oh, I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Parents, is it clear that they are to take out the trash every Tuesday night? And if they don't, their screen time is reduced by 50%. You know, they love that screen time. But if they don't take out the trash every Tuesday night, is it crystal clear that the consequence is a 50 percent reduction in their screen time? So if their screen time is for an hour, they only get 30 minutes. 
right? Is it crystal clear that their bed is to be made up before leaving the house? And if not, then their phone privileges, privileges get taken away for the remainder of the day. Have you made that crystal clear? Come on, if your bed is made up, cool. You got your phone privileges. But is it crystal clear what the consequences are, right? And so, parents, I'm also compelled to tell you tonight that rules without relationship, they simply lead to rebellion. Do you got a good relationship with your kids? That's what I want to know. Because rules without relationship lead to rebellion. You got all these rules, all these punishments, even rewards. But it starts with having that basic foundational, good, healthy relationship with your kids. Because rules without relationship simply lead to rebellion. How's your relationship with your child or with your children? That's what I want to know. Right. So, again, with discipline, the expectations are clear. And so are the rewards and the repercussions. We got that right. But 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 the Apostle Paul, he don't stop with discipline in the text. We just saw it. Right. Let me pull it back up for us. He doesn't just stop with discipline. <laughs> he gives, he talks about instruction. He uses the word instruct. Here's what instruct means. Instruct simply means teaching the word of God. That's what it means. In this context with the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter six, verse number four, when he talks about discipline and instruction, it simply means to teach the word of God. To our children. Hmm. Come here. Because I cannot emphasize this enough. You are raising a disciple. I can't emphasize that enough. You are raising a disciple, right? A kingdom kid who is reserved for God's purposes. You better hear me. Yeah. You better hear your children. They are kingdom kids who are reserved for the purposes of God, right? Not my purposes, not their own purposes, but the purposes that God has already reserved for their life. Listen, all my children are athletic. Every single last one of my children are athletic, y'all. And Darius, he's probably the most athletic in the entire household, including me and his mom, right? But guess what? My primary purpose isn't to raise the best athlete. It is to raise children for the kingdom of God. That's my number one priority. That's my number one priority. It is not to raise the best athlete, not to raise the best person for the culture, to keep up with the culture, rather, to keep up with the world standards. No, mm -mm. it is to raise children for the kingdom of God. That's my number one priority. <laughs> There's a guy by the name of Adam Wyatt, and he said this. He says, Disney may very well be coming for your kids, but travel ball took a lot of them a long time ago. Ah! Godly Adam. Disney may very well be coming for your kids. You know, they show any and everything on Disney. Some said they don't even agree or complement our faith in Christ Jesus, our biblical standards. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. Disney may very well be coming for your kids, but travel ball took a lot of them a long time ago. Cheer, football, baseball. Come on, y'all. A lot of that stuff took them a long time ago. Are y'all with me tonight? And so here's what I want to say to us. We as adults, we as Christian believers, we as folks who are part of the body of Christ, there's one thing that we know, family. The heart is not neutral. You got to remember that when it comes to your kids. The heart is not neutral. No. Whatever fills the heart flows out of the heart through our words and through our ways. Am I right about it? The condition and contents of the heart is exposed and revealed in how we show up and in what we say. You better hear me tonight. And this is also true for our children. Whatever is in their heart 
will come out of them. The heart is not neutral, y'all. I often say that children are like iPods. They only play what was downloaded in them. Hmm. You hear me? Children, they're like iPods. They only play what has been downloaded in them. And I believe that God is telling us right now to manage what they're exposed to on the playlist of their heart. Can you hear pastor tonight? Yeah, manage what they're exposed to on the playlist of their heart. Family, you gotta be responsible for downloading holiness in their heart. Be intentional about inserting integrity in their lives. Be purposeful about playing righteousness in their spirit. Be deliberate about teaching them how to pray and learning what it means to be saved and being able to articulate the importance of actively participating in the local church. Family, whatever you download onto the playlist of their heart is what they will echo in conduct and in communication. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Whatever you download onto the playlist of their hearts is what they will echo in conduct and in communication. Look what Proverbs tells us. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. Somebody type in the chat, guard your heart, right? And so God is saying, shepherd their heart well. Yeah, that, that's what he's saying to us. Shepherd your child's heart well, because life gushes forth from the heart. You know this. You know this. Life, it flows from the heart. And I don't know about you, y'all, but I don't want my family tree to bear rotten fruit. Preach, pastor. No. Scripture says, you know, a tree by the fruit that it bears. I do not want my family tree to bear rotten fruit. No. Nah, mm -mm. Nope. Nope, not at all. I put an end to biblical ignorance in my family. That's what you got to say to yourself. That's how you got to live. That's how you got to operate every single day. Nope, uh-uh. I'm putting an end to biblical ignorance in my family. I cancel spiritual apathy in the name of Jesus Christ. No, nah, I speak that holiness is our truth. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what we, that's the mindset we got to have as parents. That's how we got to flow and operate every single day of our lives. Church, when you do this, you are guarding the heart of your children. So whatever unhealthy beliefs about God or whatever unhealthy practices uh, concerning church that might have come for me, guess what? It's not getting past me. Nope. Mm -mm. You hear me? That's the mindset you got to have. I want you to think back to your childhood. I wanted you to think about some of the some of some of the beliefs that you even have now as a believer. I want you to think about some of the practices that you have been taught in your life that you are still still operating in. You got to tell yourself that it might have come for me. Yeah, the unhealthy beliefs, the unhealthy practices concerning church, they might have come for me. But guess what? It's not getting past me. Uh uh. I'm going to destroy it so that my children won't have to. You better hear me. It ain't getting past me. Nah, I'm going to destroy it so that my children won't have to. If you don't kill what's been killing your family, it will continue killing your family. Huh. Nah, uh-uh. We go to church on Sundays and we serve in ministry. We don't sit around all day to watch football and go golfing. That's for after church. Right. We worship God through our tithes and offering. We don't talk down about giving to the church. Uh, uh, not us. Uh, uh. By the way. How come society don't mind you wasting your money at strip clubs, but talk bad about you sowing money into the church? Crazy. I mean, people literally have made songs about making it rain in the strip club. And people glorify it. We play it all the time, right? Why do people make such a big deal about where the money is going in ministry 
But have you ever, <laughs> God, they don't care about you making Versace rich, Michael Kors rich, or the corner store rich. And not one time have you asked them what they do with your money. Uh-uh. Have any of y'all ever written a letter to, to Tommy Hilfiger and said, what you do with the money I spent on the clothes? Never. Nope. And so as for me in my house, we will have a healthy perspective of Jesus Christ and his local church. All that other foolishness, it may come for me, but it ain't getting past me. Uh-uh. Guard the heart. Y'all hear me tonight, y'all? And so then, I'm, 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 about to, I'm about to be done. Don't worry. Y'all tired of me. May sound like I'm beating you up, but I ain't beating you up. I'm building you up. Trust me, I am building you up. Here it is. As a parent who's raising kids, not for the culture, but for the kingdom, the top priority is to fill them with the knowledge of God's will. Right? And so therefore, y'all, guess what? It's my duty and it's my delight to invest sacrificially, systematically, and strategically in order for my kids to thrive spiritually. Yep, I want kids who thrive spiritually, y'all. I don't want them ignorant to the word of God or to the things of God, no. I don't want them being fooled by stuff they learn from their friends at school. I don't want them being deceived by the wicked ways of this world, no. And so then it's my duty and my delight to invest sacrificially, just like I do for AAU basketball and sacrifice. I got to do the same thing for the development of my children's spiritual life. Systematically. I mean, some of y'all are on a rigid schedule. No cheer practices this time. So we got to eat at this time. We got to have homework done by this time. Come on, y'all. I have to do the same thing, if not more, for my child spiritually. Right? Strategically. In order for them to thrive spiritually. Right? I really believe it is incomprehensible. It is absolutely baffling to believe that we could have a Christian home and raise Christian children if we're not willing to invest the necessary time to instruct them in the ways of the Lord. Uh-uh. We won't be able to do this by binge watching our favorite shows every day. No, we can't instruct them in the ways of the Lord if we don't want to learn God's word for ourselves and teach it to our kids. No, we won't be able to instruct them in the Lord, y'all, if we keep treating church and Christ as just another option instead of a priority. No, no more excuses. God expects you to make God and the things of God the top priority in your child's life. Anything else is just plain old disobedience to God, and that's unacceptable. Yep, that's unexpect, un unacceptable. But if we do take God at his word and train our kids in the way they should go, then it will be well with your children and well with you. Hear the promises of the Lord. Hear it. This is the same message that he gave to the children of Israel. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. So all will go, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. There's still some blessings that are reserved for you in coming your way, but you got to begin to obey the word of God. Can you hear me? I'm talking about unspeakable blessings are reserved for those who honor and live by the word of God. And the question is, will that be your children? Yeah. Will, will, will that be your children, y'all, who, who can testify that all is well? in their lives. Will it be? Family, I'm telling you tonight that you play the primary role in your child's spiritual development. <laughs> I mean, anything that they learn in kids' life or youth ministry is simply a supplement to your spiritual investment that you're making and pouring into your kids on a daily basis. 
You hear me? It's your primary responsibility, parents, is what I'm telling you. Here at New Life, we are getting ready to have some of the healthiest parents. Yep. Which means we're going to have some of the healthiest kids because of the investment that we're making in their spiritual lives. I want to give you a few resources, y'all, and even a few ways where you can, you know, begin to pour in your kids and to disciple your kids. All right. Just some practical stuff that you can do. Very practical stuff that you do. And it's some of the stuff I even do myself. Right. Here's one of the things I do. I turn the car rides into devotional time. Yep. Take, I primarily take our boys to school, so I use that time for devotional time with my boys. That means, what, do I, what does that look like, Pastor? Well, here, it, here it is. I have the boys read scripture out loud. While I'm driving, they're reading scripture out loud. And then we have an opportunity to discuss the very scripture that we just read. After that, we pray, right? We do this every morning. Every morning, that's what we do. And that's something that you can do for your family as well. Turn the car rides into devotional time. Here's something else you can do. Create a memory verse of the week. Right? Something that y'all do at home. It's going to be the memory verse of the week. It's something perhaps that you put up uh, where your children can see it visibly somewhere in the home. You're reminding them of this every single day and throughout the day. But what are you doing? You're getting the word of God in their spirit, y'all. You're raising a disciple. You are raising a disciple. They need the word of God in them. Remember how scripture says that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? Scripture says, what else about the word of God? What else does the scripture say about the word of God? Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, right? Isaiah says the grass withers, the flower fades, but only the word of the Lord shall stand forever. And so creating the memory verse of the week, that helps to get the word of God into the spirit of your child. What about simply just praying with your kids before school and praying with them before bedtime? Very practical. You are raising a disciple. No more passive parenting, right? There's even... Even um, some books out there that you can get that can help uh, be a blessing to your life. Um, here's one of the couple of the books that um, I'm going to recommend to you. Shepherding a Child's Heart is absolutely phenomenal. That book is ridiculous. I recommend it, right? And Boundaries with, Boundaries with Kids. That's another book by Dr. Henry Cloud. Y'all with me? Very practical stuff, resources that you can have to uh, improve your parenting as a Christian because you are raising disciples. Here's a website, focusonthefamily.com. A whole bunch of resources, good information on that website. All right. Here's a profile that I follow on social media. Kingdom Kids, a whole bunch of information. Sometimes it's like five Five things to speak over your kids, right? Five verses to um, for kids who are struggling in school, right? It's a whole bunch of good information that this black woman actually puts out through her uh, social media handle called Kingdom Kids. So she's on Instagram. Black sister, y'all. I'm giving out some real good information for those who are making disciples of their children. Amen. And then for those of us uh, who are on tonight, you can do something real simple. If your child is in second grade or up, second grade or up, you can simply text youth to the number that's right there on your screen right now. If your child is first grade or below, then you text the word kids life. You text the word kids life to that number right there on the screen. And our staff simply wants to send you some resources that will help in you discipling your child as a Christian parent. Let me put it up one more time. Right? We're going to send you some resources. Text that number right there. Again, if your child is second grade and up, text the word youth to that number that's right there. If they're first grade and below, text the word kids life with a Z. All one word. Kids life with a Z to the number that's right there on the screen. Amen? We're getting this thing right. No more excuses, y'all. We're not in the excuse business. No, we're not. 
No more excuses. We are not in the business of passive parenting. No, not on my watch. I'm going to give you all the information I possibly can so you can feel comfortable, confident, have that conviction of being a parent who is discipling your child to be the best they can be in Christ Jesus because you are raising a kingdom kid. Amen. Let's worship God in our giving tonight, y'all. Real simple. We prefer for you to use Zelle. Finance at impactoakland.org is the email address that you will use. All right. Let's give tonight, family. And I want to let you know real quick, please don't log off just yet. I want to uh, let you know about two things that are coming up um, at New Life that we want you to be a part of. Okay. Here's something we want you to be a part of. All right. <clears throat> Ladies, it is pajama party time. Lady Jen is having an event called Purpose Pajama Party, y'all. And this is for women between the ages of 21 and 33. Pastor, I'm 19. Can I come? Yeah, you can come. Pastor, I'm 35. Can I still come? Yes, you can come. Yes, you can come. All right. I know some of you have been asking. I'm a little bit outside of the range. Listen, the idea is to have you be there so Lady Jane can pour into your life. All right. Friday, May 3rd, 6 p.m. OK, ladies, make sure you sign up. Sign up. Can I put it one? Put it back up. Sign up. Sign up. Sign up. Sign up. All right. You can go to our website and sign up. Fellas, I need to know right now who's coming to the men's breakfast. We changed it. It was going to be at Grand Lake Kitchen. But we changed it to town fair. All right. It's at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. on Saturday, April 27th at town fair. All right. The address is right there. But I need to know right now who is coming. Who plans on coming to the men's breakfast? I need you to just put it in the chat real quick. If you're coming, just say I'm coming. Put that in. I'm coming. If you're a man and you're coming to the men's breakfast, I want you to type in the chat. I'm coming. We just need to see who's all coming, y'all. All right. I want to be there by myself, talking to myself at the table with town fair makes it very easy. You pay for your own food there. We have tables already reserved and we begin to pour into each other at the men's breakfast. OK, it's going to be real simple. Let me put it back up one more time. Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. We are going to have a great time in the Lord. All right, fellas. All right, family. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> We're getting this thing right this year in 2024. No excuses at all. We're making whatever adjustments we need to make. Remember, the first message was about calling the audible, right? Don't be afraid to call the audible. <laughs> God sometimes wants us to even call in the audible, make some kind of adjustment, even in our parenting. And so you've been filled with the word of God. You've been filled with truth this past Sunday and now tonight as it pertains to no more passive parenting. I can't wait to hear the testimonies. I can't wait to see how healthy your family is because you are discipling them with the word of God. All right, I love you, family. May God keep you. May God bless you. May he be your protection. We continue to lift up brother George Jackson to you. Uh, Lord God, we pray that you would heal his body in the name of Jesus. May he come out stronger. I pray, God, that as he goes through this open heart surgery, Lord God, that you would be with him, Lord Jesus. Uh, strengthen his faith, God. Uh, strengthen his hope in you. And may we continue to be that supportive spiritual family who's right there by our brother's side. We pray tonight, God, for anyone else who may be on tonight, who may be dealing with some kind of illness or sickness, God, or infirmity in their body. We pray the word of healing over their life, that we are healed by your stripes that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Thank you, God, for being Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Heal, God, in the name of Jesus is our prayer. We love you, Lord. Thank you for the word of God tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, new life. Repeat after me, my lifestyle is my greatest witness. My lifestyle is my greatest witness. Last time, my lifestyle, it is my greatest witness. All right, y'all, i see y'all Sunday, 10.30 a.m. Bring a friend. I love you.